Namaste. I'm Shubhi Mathur and I welcome you all to yet another episode of Let Us Talk. Our elders have a lot to share with us. They have tremendous experience which they have gained over the years. I feel we have a lot to learn from them. But these days, with more and more nuclear setups, our interaction with them is limited to holidays, vacations, family events, functions or festivals. Although thanks to technology, video call and voice call hoti rehti hai, but jo saath milke seekhne ki baat hai, wo is technology mein kaha. These days, somehow the younger generation feels they are more travelled, more exposed, more evolved. They know more than their seniors. They are more practical and real. But, won't you agree with me that the coping mechanism and the tolerance level of our seniors is much more than ours. Today also, we have an interactive session where we will hear some golden words of advice from our today's guest. So today we have with us Ms. Sarita Singh, a retired government bureaucrat. Welcome Mrs. Singh. It's a pleasure to have you on Let Us Talk. Thank you, Shubhi. Uh, I have been a follower of your Let Us Talk and I've been impressed by the selection of your topics and talks. Little did I know that I will be a topic someday myself and we'll be talking about Sarita Singh. But anyway, I hope it will be interesting and let's uh, we'll have a very interesting conversation on this. Inspiration is all around. Uh, you are such an inspiration and how could I not have you on our channel? You have had very prestigious postings in your tenure. You were posted as the CGM Postal Department in Chhattisgarh, Uttar Pradesh. Then you were in the Women Empowerment women and child development in government of Rajasthan. So was this your childhood dream to come in the civil services? So tell us little about yourself that what were your goals, your ambitions? George Bernard Shaw had said life is about creating yourself. So to be frank, uh, joining the civil services was not my dream. I just when I was in school, I fell in love with my husband who was then a dashing polo player and a captain in the armed forces. But being the only child, my parents wanted me to choose either the medical profession or join the London School of Economics. But I guess my uh, wishes prevailed and I got married early in life uh, because my mother-in-law who was on her deathbed wanted to see her only son married. So uh, based on the promises given by my husband to my family, my parents, I continued uh, my studies and that governed the direction of my life. I did my graduation, post-graduation, MPhil, in between I also had my son and uh, since I had done so well, I got immediately a lecturership job in the University of Rajasthan. Oh, wow. uh, thereafter, just by a chance comment from my mother, I took the civil service exams and qualified and that determined my future journey as a bureaucrat. So it was not really a dream but I think destiny willed me to be in it. So as they say, expect the unexpected. One side, you had the bells of London school ringing, calling you. And other side were the wedding bells. And it was by choice. You chose to get married. And after wedding, you pursued all your education, all your exams. You entered the civil services. So I would like to ask you, today's generation, many of them leave their you know, uh, some desire to study or something to do after wedding. At times, it is just not being able to take out time. Sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's inertia or sometimes it's lack of motivation. So what message do you have for them? You completed all your studies after your wedding and your husband was in the army. He was a polo player. He was posted in different parts of the country. Still, you managed to do all this by yourself. So what message do you have for the younger generation? Let me begin by giving you an example. We all use Google. Yeah. And Google, the best thing about Google is Now suppose I ask him, ask it, would, is coffee good for me? It will give you 100 reasons why coffee is good for me. Mm -hmm. If I ask, is coffee not good for health? I'll again get 100 reasons why it is not good for me. So, the beauty of this is that, you know, aapki dimaag ki baat sunta hai aur wo hi bolta hai jo aap sunna chate ho. Similarly, oh. it is the same thing with the human mind. Aap jo apne dimaag se bolte ho ya sunna chate ho, wo hi aapko usi directions pe le jata hai. Now, suppose I say this is very difficult for me. 
my mind will make me procrastinate get me shackled and i'll not be able to really make up my mind but if i resolve and i say no this is very simple and i can do it i will manage so this is how uh, this is my message for the youngsters that it is basically use your mind of course one has to use the heart also which i did you know people explore their options and settle down my i settled down first and explored my options so that was just a reverse uh, cycle in my life but then i did what my mind told me and my uh, course of action followed what i wanted to achieve in life so inspiring and this time this is what we are talking about in late 70s and you know you truly said that where there is a will there is a way when you have to do something you do it you know when one is in doubt i would suggest the youngsters to look into the mirror and decide the strength is you the enemy is you and the determination is also you so you have to choose the path for yourself very very carefully so your professional career started after your wedding and also not only the professional part i would say you were also taking care of your house your parents your in-laws your newborn child how did you manage all this uh, today we often hear you know young couples saying time hi nahi milta hai ek hi to weekend aata hai are milne ka time nahi hai phone karne ka time nahi hai they are always on the run and here you were handling everything by yourself so what message do you have for the young couples who are always on the run the crucial the key to my success has been time management yeah. i always uh, often tell my uh, yeah children that please follow the 8 plus 8 plus 8 rule that is work hard for 8 hours sleep well for 8 hours and for 8 hours you do rest of the activities uh, and the rest 8 hours spend for 3 f's which is family friends and faith 3 x's which is health hygiene and hobby and 3 s which is spirit soul and service and above all uh, cup it up with smile so if you divide your time like this i think everything is possible so well said time management is the key to so many things in our life your personal front was very well taken care of you had lot of support from your family and your partner but how challenging was it on the professional front like you mentioned you were the only daughter only daughter in law so taking the taking both the set of parents for their health checkups um, your children were also small how did you handle the professional front i'm asking this question again because you know today the young couples are always like ki office mein itna stress hai itna pressure hai and they carry that stress home so how did you deal with your professional challenges way back then um i'll again restress the time management and i said 8 plus 8 plus 8 two that means you have to shut off after those 8 years 8 hours and then go go on to the next 8 hours so you do feel feel uh, stressed and the work pressures are there but then the best is to handle them there itself it's not wise to bring them home and similarly there may be domestic problems there's no point taking it to the workplace but when we start mixing up the two that's where the problem begins so i think yes uh, to every i the one area that i would stress is decision making at times we procrastinate a lot whether it is at the workplace or at the home front but procrastination only leads to lot of delays take a decision it may be right it may be wrong but then there's always a chance that you can improve and straighten the matters but unless you take decisions you will not move forward so one step at a time is really the key to your own success uh you know i observed the couples today they are meeting maybe maybe for lunch or over tea or finding time for each other but then they carry their work pressures they are on their phone they are talking to their uh, people so you're not giving the required attention to your partner which can be quite uh, this art irritating yeah and um, yeah so this self respect for each other i mean self respect and the respect for each other is very very crucial we have to recognize the expectations that our partners have from us so why you are uh, also in the professional front then don't bring your domestic pressures at home don't try and uh, ring up and find out what is happening there 
because things will happen and they they'll be taken care of so your concentration and this is where i say conscientiousness is very important the sense of responsibility is very important so well said that time management not only in personal front but on professional front also also respect each other's work and boundaries agar koi office gaya hai to don't call and disturb ki let's meet for a lunch date or let's meet for a coffee date main tumhare office ke paas aa raha hu ya aa rahi hu let's meet respect the space which you both have created so in the end i would like to ask you what message do you have for our viewers especially the younger generation the younger couples what message do you have for them should we you know what is the best thing about ages you are expected to give sane advice so it is nice that you are asking me but we've covered a lot on our in our talk uh, firstly of course i would still insist for young couples to understand each other's uniqueness and give them space there should be companionship there should be compatibility and there should be care it should not be bogged down by locks of censorship to mai se to nahi the there should be no criticism and for, lastly don't try and change your spouse we always think ke mai apne expectations ki tarah usko badal lu which is not correct now even women are planning to do this they ask their husband why are you not like this so there should be no comparison it should be just acceptance so uh, once you do that i think the relationship will be just to be secondly you know you all are very young now but your as you age your decisions or your life would be governed by the decisions and the way you live now the bonding that you develop now the care for each other you develop now so firstly of course uh, the best support will come from your husband and you should recognize this with that of course family is very important so you just can't love one person you have to love the entire families it goes both ways so you can't just say okay i'll choose you and not the others this is not fair you have to choose the family in totality secondly we have mentioned financial literacy financial literacy i don't uh, i think it's a wrong word literate, literate everybody is is the financial action which is more important once you take decisions as i told earlier also decisions may be right or wrong but once you take a decision you move forward and then you have the possibility of rectifying it or going ahead with what you have decided so financial action is very very important third point is that much of your insecurities come from the your own perspective about oneself you know uh, never i personally feel khud ko khush rakhna aapka farz hai dusron ko khush rakhna aapki zimmedari nahi hai in the bargain agar aap unko bhi you can put them keep them in happy mode which is very nice so you have to first uh, my uh, suggestion is that man should care for oneself one's own happiness this is not something being a proof or you know being uh, self uh, agrandized but it is basically caring for yourself your own wishes your desires and how you want to see your life so uh, this is one and i remember when i was hosted in a place chatisgarh it was all naxalite in western area but i think the one of the most beautiful areas one can visit and that's where i started a gratitude journey every day you put it you write at the end of the day something on the slip and put it in the jar and by the end of the month you count your blessings and you feel that there is so much in this world to thank for so a gratitude jar is an excellent way to humble yourself to realize how lucky and blessed one is and i think uh, it can keep going on and on but basically if one practices all this I think one can lead a very very happy life. I would also like to add saying thank you is a manners but feeling thankful is actually gratitude. So uh, when you are doing something or when you have a aim in life usko puri shiddat se pursue karo and that's where my uh, focus on conscientiousness and responsible behavior comes in. You have to be responsible for your actions but consensus will make it very very light bearing and interesting so uh, 
we are, you know, we talk about the intelligent portion, but I would here like to talk about emotional portion also. When you balance your priorities and try and achieve them step by step, that mindset and their focus gets more into your uh, life, and you are able to achieve things very very easily. Thank you so much, Mrs. Singh. It was a pleasure to have you here with us and hear these pearls of wisdom from you. I'm sure not only the youngsters but the elders would also have been motivated to share their pearls of wisdom with their children or grandchildren. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shubhi. It was such a pleasure uh, talking to you and just reliving my past. It's like the reel which is going, uh, you know, rolling back. Mm -hmm. I loved it and thank you so much for calling me. Thank you.